Hey, what's up guys? Benny here and welcome to the best settings for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I've been playing this game non-stop since it became available so that I could figure out the best settings, the best setup so that you can go ahead and use them yourself so you can get a head start over the opposition. Now, I've gone ahead and reset my account so everything is on default so that you guys can see step by step what you should be doing. I'm going to go through controller settings, graphic settings, field of view, everything you need to know as well, some secret secret settings and things that I found that I've been using to, you know, get a little bit of an advantage. Now, if we go ahead to the settings, first of all, we're going to start with graphics. Now, one of the things that you always want to do when you're playing Call of Duty, if you're playing on PC and on console, is make sure you're playing on full screen. This is just going to give you the best possible uh, performance and experience whilst you're playing the game. Also, your refresh rate, one of the things I would recommend is if you're using a, uh, a certain graphics card and you're only getting about 144 FPS, don't set your monitor to 240, go for 144 and kind of go for a more smooth, consistent experience rather than it being all over the place. So I got, I've got 240 because I've got a 3080 in my PC. Then you want gameplay vSync disabled, menu vSync disabled, NVIDIA reflex low latency. This is a brand new thing that got added into Call of Duty only a couple months ago. I have that on normal. I don't go for the boosted version. I find normal uh, just works really well for me. It allows you to just be a little bit more reactive. It's really useful. I play on a 1080p resolution. Now, part of me is looking at going up to 1440p just for that extra level of detail, um, especially if I can get the same like frame rate performance, but that works for me right now to set it for whatever you've got. Then we're gonna go aspect ratios automatic, colorblind modes. I'm not gonna go into this, even though they've got so much customization and colorblind types. I am colorblind, um, but I kind of try and keep it default because I'm making content, but you've got so much customization. So if you, you know, if you wanna mix things up, make your uh, like HUD look a little bit different, you can go ahead and do that. Um, field of view. Now this is a big one because this is now available, not just for PC, but it's also available for console now. I personally play on a 90. Now, the reason I do that is because I quite, in multiplayer, the maps aren't that big. I don't need to have too wide a peripheral vision. I know roughly where people are gonna be coming from. So I wanna see the targets nice and big. Now, don't get ahead of yourself and suddenly go, I've got field of view on console. Go straight up to like 120. It's it's not that big of a, like it's useful, but your target's gonna be a lot smaller on your screen. So you could miss small details. For me, 90 is the perfect one. Now, ADS field of view, there's been a lot going on around this that, oh, you should have affected because it reduces your recoil. It doesn't, it's an illusion because you're a bit further back. So the gun doesn't look as if it's moving as much. Um, you wanna go for independent. Now, the reason I use independent is you've got a wider field of view so you can see a little bit what's going on. And then when you snap into ADS, the target's gonna be big and it's gonna be easier to make those micro adjustments, land those headshots that you really wanna be landing. So go for independent brightness. This is all based on your own individual setup. Just kind of go here. I've got it on 50. That works on my monitor. Uh, frame rate limit. Now I go for custom and then I drop this down to 240. Just because um, if you've got like, if what I would recommend doing is testing out what your FPS is uh, on your monitor. And if you can, make it so it's somewhat similar. So you get like a smooth frame rate. So you're not suddenly at like 130 at one point, then 170. It can be a bit jarring at some times to be a bit more detrimental than it needs to be. Menu custom and minimize game frame rate. I've got it 60. Texture quality. Now this is a big question because you go, do I want to make the game look good or do I want performance? Personally, I go for performance. So I kind of drop everything down to medium. Um, I don't download the HD game textures and models pack. Don't need it. Special effects quality, medium. Screen space reflection is on low. Um, it's like one of the big things on screens. If you're playing on PC, look, to, look at the effect on VRAM. You want it to be as low as possible. Object view distance. I've got that one as high because I want to see stuff as far as I can so I can react. Um, but once again, depends on your PC. If you want to, drop it down to medium if you want a bit more frames. Um, volumetric lighting, once again, medium. Shadow quality. Shadows are actually really useful in this game because it can tell you enemy locations. That's one big tip I would say, is learn parts of the map where the shadows are gonna bounce onto walls so you can react. Like there's a couple places on Garrison, for example, where you can be staring at one thing 
and then you know to flick to the left when you see the shadow on your side. Um, I'll show that in another in my tip video coming out. Uh, but we're going to go over high. And that is also why you want to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I've got a lot of Black Ops Cold War and Warzone content coming out over the next couple of weeks. You're not going to want to miss out on. Dynamic Shadows, uh, I have this as on because once again, just like I said, you want those shadows. Uh, special Effect Shadows, I've got as enabled. Weapon Shadow, I disable because shadows are my weapon. I, I don't want any unnecessary shadows that aren't going to help me in a performance way. Um, ray Tracing, once again, I kind of put this down to medium. Um, you can, There is an argument to turn it off uh, because it does have an effect on your VRAM usage. Then this is a brand new feature as well, the post-processing effects. You now have NVIDIA DLSS, which is very exciting because if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, it's going to allow you to get more frames and more performance out of your PC. So that is why I go for performance because I want the most frames possible. I want to try and get as like, because that is going to really help you in a competitive situation. It's the same with like the next gen consoles. If you've got a PS5 or a Series X versus a Xbox One or PS4, you're going to be getting more frames it's really going to help you out. Uh, it's the same on PC. So I go for performance there. Then motion blur, disabled, uh, then that's nothing. Then sub, yeah, I have that enabled. Then I put this down to medium. Uh, actually, I put this on low because it's got effects. It's It's got a high usage on my VRAM. So I want that lower. So, you know, I've got enough space to work with. Advanced, that's the set, default, default, default. Um, and yeah, that's all the settings for the graphics. Now, all right, if, make sure you apply those. Then we're going to head over to audio. Now, this is for everyone. Now, audio is a very important part of Black Ops Cold War because footsteps and sound around you is insane. Like if you if you can set, like listen to footsteps well enough, you're just going to, it's, it's almost like sonar. You're just going to be able to tell exactly where enemy players are and you're going to be able to react better, get higher kill games, more wins. So, uh, master volume, I have that at 100. I drop music down to zero. Even though with the music in this game is epic, I make content, so uh, I try and not have music on, um, and it can also be distracting. Sound effect volume, you want to have at 100%. This is the most important um, setting in the menus for, for audio because you want to be hearing those footsteps, gunshots, and so on. Then dialogue volume, I drop this back way back to 40. Sometimes they give you useful call outs, but it's not very important. And cinematics volume is the exact same. It's just kind of some ambience um, that you don't really need. It makes the game feel cool, but you know, you know it's, it's just not needed. Then we've got our audio presets. Now, I personally have been using super bass boost uh, right about now, uh, but high boost is one that is also really good. That's gonna really bring out those footsteps um, from the environment really going to help you out. So I'd recommend using that. Uh, also, a load of awesome things. You can set all your kind of default system sounds and all that stuff. Voice chat. This is all, I would say, personal preference and what you prefer to have. Um, it's not going to affect you in game. So we're now going to move on to the interface um, because you've got a lot of customization here that you've never had before. Uh, I personally skip the introduction movie. Once you've seen it once or a couple of times, you're like, oh, that's cool. But you, I want to kind of be ready and in the game. I don't want to be seeing the cinematic as much. Um, then for HUD elements, um, there's a couple of things I changed. So hit marker visuals is really useful. Um, damage based hit markers, really useful as well. But the one thing I changed, I just drop hide my ally health bars because I don't need to see my teammates health uh, when they're running in front of me. In my opinion, I'd rather see enemy health bars and be able to see stuff that could potentially take me down. So that's the settings I have there. Um, and then honestly, nothing else. If you want to, if you're trying to figure it out, put your FPS counter on, uh, which could be really useful to help you with the previous settings. Uh, but then we'll go over to the controller. Now this, I think, is probably the one that you're most interested in because this is going to be very, very important to your success in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So stick sensitivity. It's very different to Warzone as well. I personally feel I need to be a bit more reactive. So I go for a 5.5, but then I normally on Warzone, I've got a 0.7 ADS modifier because you're normally at long distance fights. So you need to make those micro adjustments to land your shots. Multiplayer, not as much. You still need to be reactive and be able to kind of drag an assault rifle across the body when someone's up close. So I go for a 0.9. Still able to make those micro adjustments because it's a little bit slower than your default sensitivity, but that is really going to help you out. Then button layout. Once again, this is this is a simple one. Um, it's like you, you've got all the ones that they've got uh, in Warzone, like Bump Jump Tactical, but Tactical for me is the best one, especially as I'm using an Elite Series 2 controller. So I've got paddles on the back for the extra buttons as well. So um, I've got that. If you're using a PlayStation controller, I'd recommend flipping this on a Xbox controller. Uh, I wouldn't. I'll just keep it as default and use the triggers on the back. Uh, then invert vertical look. No. Controller vibration, you want to turn it off. Now, 
Uh, reason I do this is because you don't want your hands like being affected by the game around you. You just don't want that random vibration. You can throw your aim off. Now, sometimes people don't think about it, but every single pro player plays with vibration off, to my knowledge, because it, it does throw you off a little bit. Now, we've got a whole bunch of other aim down sight assist settings. Like they've given you a lot of customization in Cold War, which is brilliant. You got, um, so you want these are all enabled. Airborne mantle behavior, I personally have as manual. Now, the reason I do this is because how, how often do you like jump shot and then accidentally mantle something? And then you're like, oh no, I've mantled. And then you lose the gunfight because of it. Here, you just have to press it again once you jump. Um, and that means that you're like, you can purposely mantle. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but really, really helpful. Um, and a setting that a lot of people have overlooked for multiplayer. Ground and mantle behavior, yeah, is on press. Um, then aim down sight behavior is just hold. Steady aim behavior, hold. Armor behavior, uh, apply one at a time. It's just what you're used to in um, multiplayer, but this is only for specific modes. Um, so it's not Warzone, there is, but there are armor plates in certain modes. Uh, that you can take advantage of. Attack vehicle control mode is just aim-based. Um, I find that's the best one. Now, for your stick layout, this is a very important aspect as well. You want to drop your dead zone on your controller to the minimum down to around 10. This will stop you getting drift, but will allow you to be reactive and be like as like, you know, as snappy with your aim as you possibly can be. Like, but if you've got an old controller, you get stick drift, you might want to adjust these to suit your controller, but 10 works for me. Uh, auto move forward is disabled. Something I would say, auto sprint can come in handy if you're playing a lot of multiplayer and you don't want to be clicking your left stick a lot. Uh, I personally just have it off. I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't know why. I'm just used to just hitting that left thumb stick uh, to sprint as much as I can. Sprint cancels reload. No parachute auto deploy is disabled. Equipment behavior you have as hold. Um, interact reload behavior. Now this is really interesting. Now um, personally. I have um, just tap to reload. So it's tap to reload and hold to interact with stuff. It's a standard traditional Call of Duty thing, and that's what I would recommend using. Um, but overall, that is the best setup that you can have in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. There aren't as many settings to change as there are in um, like Warzone, for example, but still a really solid setup. And I hope this video uh, has been helping you out as well. I'm going to have loads of videos from like best loadouts, how to unlock stuff and rank up quickly. Because as you can see, I've already got ahead and got the gold XM4 assault rifle, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, but yeah, there's so much to this game. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Share any other tips and advice you have in the comments as well. Let's all help each other out. And I will see you next time for another Call of Duty video, whether it's Warzone, whether it's Cold War. See you then.